I'm Claire Richardson. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin with breaking news. Israel says it has dismissed two officers and reprimanded three others for Monday's airstrikes in Gaza that killed seven aid workers. Israel's military admitted a series of grave mistakes, saying the soldiers mishandled critical information and violated the army's rules of engagement. We can get the very latest on this from DW's correspondent, Tanya Kramer, joining me now from Jerusalem. Tanya, what more do we know about the results of this investigation? Well, this report uh, was just uh, released by the military and they're basically saying that the forces uh, they were riding there identified a uh, Hamas gunman on one of the trucks where the uh, World Central Kitchen uh, aid workers uh, were at the time. They were then uh, uh, um, you know, offloading uh, the, the aid from there and then uh, turning back from this warehouse in uh, Central Gaza. Now, they say, according to this report, that they identified a gunman on an aid truck, as they say, and then at a later stage, another gunman also at the warehouse. And uh, they say, uh, the IDF, the Israeli military, is saying that they believe um, that the forces believe that these uh, two gunmen were in uh, one of the three uh, vehicles. And they're talking about a misidentification, they're talking about misclassification uh, of uh, the uh, event. And as you said, two of the officers have been uh, uh, dismissed and three uh, were reprimanded. But a lot of the details are not really uh, yet known. There will be a lot of questions asked as this convoy uh, was hit uh, uh, with, uh, according to reports here, at least uh, three uh, missiles. There is also talk about a complete uh, breakdown of the chain of command. Uh, so we'll have to see whether this is an, an answer, you know, for uh, the World Central Kitchen, but also, of course, for the relatives and the aid workers community that is working in Gaza. Now, this comes as international pressure is mounting on Israel to do more to protect civilians in Gaza. Uh, the United Nations top human rights body has, in fact, just passed a resolution calling for Israel to be held accountable for possible war crimes in the Palestinian territory. The Human Rights Council has also called for a halt in arms sales to Israel. 28 countries voted in favor. Uh, six, including Germany and the United States, voted against and 13 abstained from the resolution. It is the first time the UN body has taken a position on the war in Gaza. So, Tanya, it really seems like international pressure uh, on Israel is mounting by the day. Well, that's uh, quite right. This is a nation, uh, another international organization and another uh, resolution that has been adopted criticizing Israel's uh, conduct of war. We got a first reaction there from the Israeli ambassador in uh, Geneva that was distributed here by the foreign minister that said that the decision today is a stain on uh, uh, the Human Rights Council and the United Nations uh, in uh, general. Uh, they've been saying that uh, Hamas is not mentioned in their role on October 7th. Uh, that also reflects, of course, this very strained relationship between the United Nations and uh, Israel as well. Uh, but of course, it is just another uh, international organization uh, that is now uh, criticizing Israel again amidst this really mounting, as you said, international uh, pressure further pushing uh, Israel uh, to change its conduct of war and among them also uh, its closest ally, the United States, that have also, you know, uh, criticized Israel and asked them to do more to protect uh, civilians in Gaza given the high death toll and to do more uh, to protect, uh, to bring in more aid and also, of course, in this case, to protect uh, more aid workers. But we haven't really seen this translating into any uh, significant changes uh, for the population, for the civilian population on the ground there in Gaza now in the six months uh, of this war. On the subject of aid, Israel has also now announced the temporary opening of more aid routes into Gaza. What more can you tell us about that? Well, yeah, this is uh, quite a significant uh, development because uh, aid organizations and the United Nations have called for weeks to open another 
uh, land uh, crossing to get aid uh, di more directly into especially northern Gaza, where the population is really in a critical situation, as the United Nations have said, uh, on the brink uh, of famine. And this decision came after what was described here in the Israeli media, after a tense phone call between uh, the US President Joe Biden and uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying that they will uh, open at least temporarily uh, the Eris crossing, that is a crossing in the north of Gaza. It used to be more a pedestrian crossing. Also, uh, there were some uh, cars going through. Uh, but again, it is still to see how the logistic of all of this uh, will be, uh, how many trucks will go in there, uh, when this will happen. And we heard the uh, U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, also saying that the, re the test will be, uh, you know, uh, the, the reality test will be what will happen and that they will watch it very closely, what Israel will do in this regard. Tanya, thank you as always for bringing us up to speed. That is Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem.